morning everybody how are you I'm fantastic thank you for asking today's breakfast 50 grams of whey from ghost protein which is probably the nicest protein I've ever tried this is the peanut butter cereal milk flavor it's absolutely incredible big fan would recommend check it out inside supplements Josh Temper discount um, yes I've got no shakers so I've been using a this is like a cocktail maker <laughs> with the top on it actually works quite well because it's got the filter on top so not too bad so 50 grams away and it was about 45 grams of protein 40 grams of protein I've got then got two whole bagels which is 90 grams of carbs I've then got 50 grams of jam on top of that which is about 120 grams of carbs in total because we're trying to get full before we go train legs today um, because I've been I've been struggling to just have the energy to train um, it's not necessarily because of food I've still managed to nail all my food and everything it's just been I've been building up this feeling of of just fatigue for a long time and I did a little bit of math and it turns out that I've not had a deload or time away from the gym or, or like pushing bodybuilding for nine months it would literally be nine months on on Sunday because I did my six month prep which I couldn't couldn't stop and then did a three months push after competition which which is just I had to do it because, you know, I was in such a susceptible position coming out of the competition, being so depleted, being so lean, that I had no choice but to push. And, and I've got a lot of tissue on. I've got a lot thicker. I've got a lot bigger. Not that you can tell because you don't want to look like before. Um, a lot fuller, a lot stronger, a lot, lot, lot stronger. I'm the strongest I've ever been by a long way. And that comes with accumulative fatigue. So it's something that I need to do is just kind of back off a little bit. But I'm going to Cambodia in two days' time. So that'll be the, all the deload I need. And I'm going to take seven straight days purely off the gym, purely off diet. And I can't wait. But for now, I'm going to eat this, get some work done, and we'll see you at the gym. I've done a little bit on um, what to do with a warm-up and, and most of the time I'm warming up in the movements I'm not doing too much but I'll do a little bit of joint work just to kind of get the joints limber um, fluid moving around I think if we're sat down fluid basically sits in different pockets so just moving it around gets it back into the joint of fluid moving so this is what I do for legs to the mayor of London and TFL. It's, I just want to get You'll notice that I'm not fully extending because I'm not trying to stretch the muscle. I'm just trying to get the joint fluid moving. Um, there's quite a lot of research into why actually stretching isn't the best thing for us pre-workout. We want to remain explosive. So being stretchy and flexible is not necessarily what we want to do. We want to create explosive power. So instead, I'm just readying those fibers, readying my joints, keeping them warm and reducing injury risk. I Every time you evoke, you don't smoke. <laughs> it's that simple. Evoke is not an e-cigarette. There's no vapor, heat, or noise. Nice. 
So that was a monster session. Um, Brutal. That was absolutely savage. That was my last leg session before my deload. And but Jesus, it was a good one. PBs and everything felt good, uh, which was nice to feel because I've not felt good for the last like week. Um, but I've had had some really really good uh, some good sleep, so I'm not too worried. Um, Time to get home, eat, and I'll catch up with the rest of the video. So before I get into the kind of the talking portion of the video, talking about why I train and what I do, here's a physique update because I know some of you motherfuckers are gonna say I don't even lift. I do lift. I'm 110 kilos, I'm six foot one. Are you still gonna say I'm small? This is what I look like. I've gone from 88 kilos to 110 kilos. It's been a long old journey. Um, but this is it. And now this is why I train. So guys, I'm gonna go a little bit into the rest of this video is going to be me talking. Um, I'm going to explain the reasons why I train the way I do. Specifically, I, I do like a low volume, high intensity type program. You may know Dorian Yates, or you may not know Dorian Yates, but he was he was someone who, who kind of, I wouldn't say pioneered it, but he was someone who kind of made it mainstream. And it was just about kind of going one to two sets, the all out failure, um, recruiting as many motor units as possible, um, which just improves the contractile strength of a muscle. Now to reach as many motor units as we possibly can to improve the contractile strength of the muscles as much as we can, the intensity needs to be high. Now most research, in fact pretty much all research now confirms that we need a minimum intensity of training. That minimum intensity of training, if you could put it on a scale, is probably going to be about a 7 out of 10. So whenever you're talking about reps and reserve, rate of perceived exertion, and, and, and saving a little bit on those sets, you still need to be working on a minimum intensity of 7 out of 10. Now, a big, big reason of why I work to a 10 out of 10 failure is because the rate of perceived exertion can really, really change depending on how you feel. So where I feel a rate of perceived exertion is a 7 one day, it, that may be a 5 another day when I feel great, or it may be an 8 when I don't feel so great. So I know that if I put everything into each set, I know I've got nothing left. I know that I'm just going to drive up that that stimulus. We know that mechanical load is, is probably at the forefront of muscle hypertrophy. So giving myself two or three rep ranges maximum, and then just working on load within those rep ranges, I know that I'm putting more down tissue because I'm increasing load, I'm increasing mechanical tension, um, and then I'm also, <clears throat> then I'm also not cutting myself short on metabolic stress and I'm doing the higher rep sets towards the end and lower eccentrics and, and, I'm, and I'm being methodical about that. Now, um, I mentioned a little bit about eccentrics there and concentrics. We know that actually training eccentrically is, is much more muscle damaging, which is what we want. We want to be making those microfibril tears. Um, it's also more energy efficient. You use almost zero energy in an eccentric portion of the motion. So you create more damage, you create less fatigue. So it makes sense to spend more time in that area. So this is why we talk about a powerful con contraction and then a one, two, three eccentric because we're actually trying to load the eccentric because we know, again, less fatigue, more stimulus. So that is a reason why I train with those controlled tempos. Not only that, but I find it really suits my personality. Now, you may not like that, but I find that a lot of bodybuilders, they have that mentality of really wanting to go hard, really wanting to train hard, really wanting to beat themselves week in, week out. Now, in doing so, I find that making a bodybuilder train to failure is an ultimate way to do it because you know you went in there, you gave it absolutely everything, you got 100 kilo for seven reps, you know that next week you have to get 100 for eight or 105 for seven or whatever it is going to be you know that you've got that fixed weight to go up rather than like already programmed, you know, okay, you've got 100 RP7, four sets of seven, and then you've got to, you know, I know that next week it's going to be 107 RP8, and you know, how are you going to predict that? It doesn't make sense too much for me. Um, often people say that you can't train to failure often because you cannot recover from it. Well, I would argue you're not recovering properly. Um, the reason why you might not be recovering is because your volume is too high, which is why I only do one or two sets. You know, one really top heavy set and one back off set. 
Uh, this just allows you to recover for the next session. It allows you to hit things frequently. Not only that, but I sleep really, really good. I make sure my tr nutrition is on point. I make sure my protein is hit. I make sure I stretch after my sessions. I make sure I have hot baths. I make sure I have salt baths. I make sure I do all these different things that keep my recovery in check. And, and, and if I feel like I'm building up fatigue, like right now I am building up fatigue and I'm getting tired, that's when I'll deload and that's when I'll, I'll pull back. So I can, I can normally run a training cycle between 10 to 16 weeks. I've done longer, I've done shorter, but those are like the averages of where I go and then I'll run a deload. The reasons why I train the way I do, I'm trying to recruit as many motor units as I can, improve contractile strength, improve hypertrophy. Um, I'm trying to work off that minimum intensity because we know that minimum intensity is going to elicit more hypertrophy. I, I work out with control in my eccentrics because it's more energy efficient, because it's, 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 it's more damaging to the muscle in a good way. Um, it suits my personality very, very well. Um, it suits my recovery capabilities very, very well. Also, I want to add there um, that something that else I do is, is work off those, the, the ranges that the muscle is meant to work in and, and, and matching up resistance profiles and uh, matching up resistance profiles and strength profiles. So just to break it down very, very quickly, this video is going to get very long. It's already pretty long. A resistance profile is... Resistance profile is where the machine gets heavy to light or light to medium. So for example, um, depending on like where the axis is um, of a bicep curl, it's gonna, it's gonna change where it gets hard and where it gets easy. Um, and obviously we'd want to match that where it gets hard, where it gets easy to where the muscle would be strongest or weakest. So for example, if you take like a, let's take like a, a unilateral uh, reverse pull down and you're really trying to drive it in short, you would get a lot less out of that movement if you did that third or fourth, whether if you did it first, because you can really get tight, but you're always going to be pretty strong when you're lengthened and, and, and in mid range. So if you think whenever you're doing a pull up, you can always do that first bit, right? But you struggle to get that, that final pull up. Um, and that's essentially why is because the muscle fatigues in different areas. And I'm just trying to match those at where I can, you know, fatigue things at the right time. So I'm not, I'm not trying to just be some dumb bodybuilder. I'm trying to, who's just going to go in and lift aimlessly. I'm, I'm progressing. I'm focusing on things. I'm I'm working on my biomechanics and, and, and trying to push that forward. So these are things to think about if you want to be the best. And that's what I'm trying to do. You don't need to train, change your training if you're natural, if you are assisted. Um, I use this for the last four years and I've only been assisted for one of those years. And it's been absolutely transcending for me. It really, really suits my style. Um, it really, really suits a lot of people's style um, of training and mindset. And I think that's a very, very important thing to consider when you do write a training program or training cycle is, is, is the person gonna like this? Is the person gonna like this? Let's just ask ourselves that question. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like there, there's a little bit more ins and outs. I'm sure you guys might have some questions about it. So fire them down in the comments below or drop me a DM on Instagram and I'll go through all those as best I can. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys very, very soon.